Today we're talking about ANOVA, analysis of variance. What does it mean? How do you do it? Why is it not so complicated? Stick with me and find out in this video. Now this is part of a series of videos. Okay, we started with explore, clean, manipulate, describe and summarize your data, visualize. And now we're on the sec, on the videos that are about analysis, right? And this is a series, even within analysis, we're doing a few. We've done the t-test. This is ANOVA. Next, we're going to do chi-squared. ANOVA, analysis of variance, not complicated, often confused, but you don't need to be confused. I'm going to make it really super duper simple and easy for you to do and understand. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Now, before we even start, what you really want to do is understand what question is being asked. And if you understand the question that's being asked, it'll be very easy to understand and interpret the results that R gives you. The actual code to do the ANOVA isn't difficult at all, right? So that's going to take like 30 seconds to show you. Being able to interpret the results is much more important. You don't need to understand the mathematics underneath it, that underneath the hood, that R will do it for you. You do need to understand the question and how to in interpret the results, right? So let's just deal with that quickly now. If you've learned how to do a t-test, so if you're looking at an over, presumably you, you've got a relatively good understanding of a t-test. When we did a t-test, we compared two means, two averages. Look at the diagram that we've got over here, right? If we were just looking at Europe and America and we wanted to compare the life expectancy of uh, people living in Europe and people living in America, in the Americas. These are big continents, right? If it was just two continents, we would do a t-test, right? And we would say the null hypothesis would be that, th th that there's no difference between the life expectancy. And if we showed that there was a statistically significant difference, then we would reject the null and accept the fact that, yes, there is a real difference between Europe and the Americas, right? We can't use a t-test if we add in a third continent, right? The t-test doesn't cope with three or more. ANOVA does. This is when we bring in analysis of variance. But the underlying principle doesn't change, right? The null hypothesis, right? If we, we When we're looking at the data, our starting point is let's assume there is no difference in the means, in the averages. And, and the way I've, I've got box plots and density plots, it's the same thing, right? This top row over here, this is Europe as a box plot, Europe as a density plot, uh, America's in green and Asia's are in blue. So it's just the same data represented in, in two different ways, you know, and that's just to illustrate the fact that that's quite a nice thing to do. You get a sense of the shape of the data. If you use both kinds of plots, the, the big dark dot is the mean, because remember a box plot's line in the middle is actually the median, not the mean. So I've popped a dot in there because that's that's the mean. And you can see that the data sort of suggests that there is a difference in means. I've put dotted lines here that represent the means in these density plots, right? So we can see the data suggests that the means aren't equal, but that could just be sampling error, right? And so we want to know it, from the population that this data has been taken, is this difference that we're seeing statistically significant. The way we answer that question is by assuming the opposite. We assume the counterfactual. We assume the antithesis. We have a null hypothesis that says that the average life expectancy in all three continents is exactly the same, that there is no difference. And if we can show that that's not true, or that's unlikely to be true, we can accept the alternative, which is, of course, that the difference we're seeing is actually real. Okay, null hypothesis, there's no difference. Okay, and if there were no difference, this is how hypothesis testing works. If there were no difference, how likely would it be? What is the probability that we would get a sample that shows the difference that we're seeing? And if that is very improbable, if we find that to be improbable to the point that we cannot accept it, then we reject the idea that the, that the, that the, that the, the means are all the same and we can accept the alternative that in fact the difference we're seeing is real. Does that make sense? Okay, let's keep going. Now, before you do a statistical test, you decide on the alpha value or the significance level upfront, ahead of time, not retrospectively. That's called p-hacking and it's bad science. Now, what is the alpha value? Basically, it's basically this idea of hypothesis testing. If we assumed that there was no difference in the life expectancy, that the difference in means, the difference in averages was zero, right? if we assume that to be the case, what is the probability that we would get a sample that we've gotten with the, the difference that we're seeing? And if that probability was extremely small, and it was less than some sort of threshold, then we would reject this notion that they actually are all equal and we could accept the fact that the difference is real. Now, the, the alpha value is what is that threshold of extremely, 
Like, what do we mean by extremely small? And we often say 5%, if it's 5% or less, uh, that would be, you know, the sort of cut off for the threshold. But in certain circumstances, you may want a much tighter threshold and certain circumstances less so. But you have to decide up front. Okay, let's keep going. In R, as if you watched any of my videos, you know that I always work with the Tidyverse package. The Tidyverse package extends and expands the number of uh, the vocabulary with, within R, and it allows you to use pipe operators. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out my videos on on packages, right? But these are the packages that I'm using at the moment. They're just helping me create some of these graphics. Uh, we don't have to get into that right now. Just a reminder: in R, there are data sets that you can use to practice your analysis and I try as much as possible to always use data that's available to you so you can replicate what it is that I'm doing at home and practice. Um, I'm using the Gapminder data. The Gapminder data, in order to get the Gapminder data, you need to install and call the library Gapminder, right? Gapminder data is lovely data. Uh, let's just have a look at what it is. We've got a couple of variables, country, continent, year, life expectancy, population, and GDP per capita. It's lovely data to do, and it's real data, by the way. So if you, if you identify a sort of certain statistical inference in this data, that's 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 really what's happening in the world around you. It's really, really interesting. Okay, so let's start having a look at the code itself. Now, in this case, I'm going to create a new object, a, a data set that has what it is that we're looking for, and I'm going to call it gap data is equal to, we use a little arrow, assign it to, you can use an equals, but this, this is better, it's more convention, uh, gap minded data, and then the pipe operator is always and then, filter by, uh, we're just going to look at the year, 2007, so year double double equal signs, because we're asking a question here, we're saying for each row of data, ask the question, In is that observation, does that observation include the value of 2007 in the variable year? If it does, include that observation, if not, don't, right? So filter by year 2007. Just to remind you, if this had a single equals there, we would be making the statement that year equals 2007. We're not making that statement. We're not telling R that these things are equal. We're asking R, is it equal? If so, include the observation. That's just to, in, in case you're wondering about the double equals sign. Okay, and so a second condition to our filter, continents and in one of these three. So this is an or, right? If, 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 any of these conditions are met in any particular observation, include that observation in the data set that we're looking at, and then select, so what variables do we want? Just continent and life expectancy. Okay, and if we run that, and then if we have a look at that new data set, we can see that that's exactly what we've got. We've got just continent and life expectancy, and it's filtered by the filters that we had, right? Okay, let's keep going. Right, so keeping in mind the question that we're asking, and the question is quite obvious when you look at the, at the graphic that I've got there, but let's look at the actual data. If we say gap data, the new object that we've created, group by continent, and then summarize. So this is, you know, if you, if you don't know what I'm doing here, you need to watch my videos on how to summarize and describe data, but group by, basically, and summarize are lovely uh, functions to use together. In the summarize, we basically creating a new heading and it's going to be called mean life you could call it anything and that's going to be equal to the mean life expectancy but this is always going to be grouped by the continents uh, and then we are going to arrange the data by this new column that we've created called mean life and that code makes a lot more sense if you just have a look at what the output is right so down here we've grouped by these asia americas and europe and we've created a new column or a column that is basically a summary of the average life expectancy in each of those groups. Okay, so Asia, the data has a life expectancy of 70.7, the Americas 70.73.6, and Europe 77.6. You can see it's been arranged in descending order by mean life, as the code suggested. The question we're asking is, is the difference that we're seeing in the data real, or is it just by chance that we've taken a sample that shows the difference that we're seeing? Okay, so I've said that over here. I've said the hypothesis testing, null hypothesis, that the mean life expectancy is the same. The alternative is that the mean life expectancy is not the same. If the p-value, right, is less than, and shall we say, 0 0.05 or 5%, so if, it, if, 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 if the p-value is less than that, that's our threshold, then we'll reject the null hypothesis and accept the fact that there is a difference. Okay, uh, we've... Got obs we've observed our data, and our, our, our data does suggest that there's, you know, an, an observed difference. Is that by chance or is that real? We do an ANOVA model. Here we go. We've got gap data. That's the mo that's the object that we created. Uh, here's the function AOV analysis of variance. Okay, life expectancy as a function of 
continent, right? Life expectancy by continent, data equals dot. Now, why have I got the data equals dot here? Because we're piping gap data into this particular function. Whenever you use the pipe operators, the assumption that's being made is that the data or whatever data object is coming from the left is pipe being piped in as the first argument in the, in the next function. So if I didn't put data equals dot here, R would assume that this data set was being piped in and being put into the AOV function as the very first argument. Now for a lot of functions, that's fine. For most functions, it accepts the, the data object as the first argument. In the case of an, an analysis of variance, and other similar functions, t-test is the same. It's not expecting to see the data object as the first argument. So we have to tell it, look, the data, put the data over here, and that's why we have the data equals dot. All right, uh, and then pipe the output of that into a summary, and that basically asks asks R to summarize the, the, the model that it's creating there. And if we push, uh, Command enter, we can see the summary down here. Now, how do we interpret this? The, the number that we're really looking for here is the p-value, and we're interested in the p-value in the context of the question that we asked, right? We said, let's assume that all, all three continents have got the same average life expectancy, okay? If that were true, how what's the probability that we would see the difference that we're seeing? That difference or greater, well, that probability is extremely small, three point, so it's 0 0.00000342, in other words, 3.42 times 10 to the power of negative five. Uh, it's a very, very small probability. We can reject that idea, so we reject the null hypothesis that these means are the same, and we can accept the fact that what we're seeing in the data is statistically significant. Okay, got it? Of course you do. Now, keep in mind that all we've proved so far is that we think that at least one of these is different from the other two, but we haven't said which one. We don't, you know, we, we've got a, a small p-value, so we're saying, well, they're not equal, but we, we have got no real indication of maybe there's one or maybe there's two of them that are outliers. I mean, we could do an AOV with more than just three means, right? So how do we tease that out a little bit? Okay, let's have a look at that. Okay, so now we're gonna take our gap data, right, that, we've, that object that we've created, uh, we, we're just running the same code, do an analysis of variance, but instead of piping that into a summary, we piping it into a new function here, which is a a, a, a two key HSD. Uh, now, what does that stand for? The HSD stands for honestly significant difference. And if we run that, and I, I, you you can see I've 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 hashtagged out the pipe operator there because I just first want to run that line of code. And what we've got down here, this is really interesting. It takes each combination uh, so of, of continents and considers the difference between the, those two and the, P, the adjusted p-value for that difference, right? So if we look at Asia and America, right? It's saying there's a difference of, you know, in terms of life expectancy of 2.8. There's a confidence interval around that difference between zero, uh, minus six and 0 0.72. In other words, that confidence interval includes the value of zero and the value of zero would mean there would be no difference. So the, for the difference between Asia and America, we do not have evidence that there is a statistically significant difference. Difference, And if you look at the graphs, that kind of seems to be the case. Asia and America are very similar. So we don't have a statistically significant difference between those two. That makes sense looking at the graph. And to, to, to top it off, for that difference, assume if there were a difference, you know, what are the probability that there is a difference? Uh, uh, the p-value is 0 0.14, in other words, not past the threshold of 0 0.05. Okay, so not statistically significant. However, Europe and America, right? Europe and America, right? We've got a difference of four, the confidence interval, the 95% confidence interval for that difference is between uh, 0.3 and 7.72. In other words, the confidence interval does not include zero, it does not include the possibility of there being no difference at all, and we've got a p-value of less than 0 0.05, so we would say that is a statistically significant difference between the average life expectancy in Europe and the average life expectancy in the Americas. And similarly, for Europe and Asia, same story, a difference of six, the confidence interval does not include zero, it does not include the possibility or the probability that 
there is no difference between them and the p-value is extremely small. So we've got a lot of confidence that there is in fact a real difference between the life expectancy in Europe and the life expectancy in Asia. Right? Got it? Of course you do. Let's keep going. In the next video, we're going to look at the chi-squared test. So don't go away. Stay and watch another video. Learn more statistics. Comments below. Like. Please share this with people that you think might find it useful. Thanks for watching. Stay and watch another video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Hit the bell notification if you want notification of future videos. Stay well. Don't ever change. Don't do drugs. Always do your best. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.